Well, the healthcare industry is all about you. And the facility here in Hastings, Nebraska has invested literally millions of dollars in the latest equipment and technology just in case you need it. This is Mary Lanning Healthcare. Let me speak to the CEO. Well, I'm here with Eric Barber, the president and CEO of Mary Lanning Healthcare. I hope that didn't hurt, by the way. Uh, you might know Mary Lanning as a hospital, but it's so much more than that. Isn't that right, Eric? That's true, Andy. It is so much more than just a hospital. Um, the Mary Lanning family, I guess if you want to state, state it that way, uh, includes a uh, cancer center, the Morrison Cancer Center, includes an imaging center, the Hastings Imaging Center, and we continue to look for other ways to expand what we do, um, potentially through surgery centers or dialysis or other things like that. So uh, I would say that the healthcare definitely extends beyond the four walls of our hospital. That makes sense. And uh, when I think about healthcare, I tend to think about when I get sick, I gotta go see a doctor. But there's so much more that goes into healthcare than just that. It is a very big team, yes. Um, you know, we like to fashion this as the Mary Lanning family, which I think is definitely part of the culture that we have here. But mm. so much more than just your physician or the nurse, which you probably see the most of. Uh, there's going to be a phlebotomist, for example, who draws the blood, who then takes it to the lab, runs the samples to get the results to the physician to prescribe the care. Uh, there's going to be a radiologist, uh, a technician who might, you know, perform an X-ray or a CT or an MRI. Uh, there's a pharmacy, you know, that's loaded with. Uh, employees all the way from the pharmacist down to mm. the technician who actually takes the medication from the pharmacy, delivers it to the floor before it's dispensed to the patient. So there's definitely a, a large contingent of employees. I think right now, there, in fact, there's 900 employees here at Mary Lanning. Wow. And obviously an array of different educational backgrounds. I'm sure you have advanced degrees here. And are there people here that are uh, in high school and working like while they're in high school? Yeah, there definitely are. And we, have a, we um, try to find as many ways as we can to allow students to come here and get experience and, and and thinking about the different levels of education you know two departments I think to get overlooked in our hospital uh, that are probably the most entry level is housekeeping and dietary and if mm -hmm. you think about that they're still an integral part of what we do because you have to have a clean hospital you sure. have to protect our patients from infection and that comes with you know keeping the facility as clean as possible and then dietary on the other hand if the patient's not eating the patient's not getting better and of course the CEO wants lunch you know, every single day and the food here is actually quite good so oh nice <laughs> I'd love to talk to a young professional who works here uh, you Got anybody in mind? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I'll probably point you in the direction of the pharmacy. Perfect. Love it. Thanks so much. You bet. Well, I'm here in the pharmacy department with Tejal. Tejal is a pharmacist, right? Yes. And so to do that, you got you went through a lot of school. Yes, I went through four years of undergrad, and then I applied for pharmacy school. Did four years of pharmacy school and then residency is optional. So I did eight years of college wow. for this degree. Nice, she's a doctor, <laughs> she doesn't like to brag about it. Dr. Tejal, what made you decide to be a pharmacist? Um, I used to shadow at a hospital, volunteer every summer. I shadowed some pharmacists. Um, they were very inspiring, they loved what hmm. they did. Um, I worked at a community pharmacy. I loved the patient interaction that the pharmacist had there. Yeah. So it inspired me to go for this career. When did you first start volunteering? Um, well, seventh grade, but really high school is what inspired me. Seventh wow. grade was just for fun. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And so a lot of times people think of pharmacists, I do, as like the person behind the counter. You know, they're taller than you. They're just dispensing pills. But it's so much more than that. It is so much more than that. We don't just count the pills and put them in the bottle for you. Mm -hmm. We actually review all the drug interactions involved with other medications that they're taking, diseases that they're um, they might have a liver dysfunction or kidney problems that might not be the best option to take that medication. Mm. In the hospital, we review patients' charts. We actually go on the floors here and we round with the physicians. No way. Um, and we recommend things while they're assessing the patient mm -hmm. instead of after we've already gotten the prescription. Wow. And so we're recommending doses. Um, sometimes a physician will write, we want this antibiotic, and they ask us to dose it. Mm -hmm. And we'll dose according to weight, depending on the medication. Sometimes we'll dose according to their kidney function or their liver function. Um, yeah. And different medications have different chemical structures, so sometimes we'll look at pharmacokinetic calculations, which is how the Whoa. body um, reacts to the drug. Okay. And so we look at how the drug is absorbed, metabolized, distributed and excreted. So we have this, this is Lovenox, it's a blood thinner. Um, we use this medication for certain patients to prevent DVT or a, a clot, basically okay. to prevent a heart attack or a stroke. And this medication here, we can um, dose in the hospital without calling the doctor. If, hmm. they're, if they've ordered 40 milligrams every day of this shot right here that goes IV, 
then we can change it to 30 every day if um, the kidney function is poor. That's cool, and it's like color-coded, so they don't make yes. a mistake, huh? Yes, the manufacturer uses color codes to prevent um, errors so that the right dose is administered. Um, there are other ways to prevent errors as well. Yeah, because I think even with the colors, I'd probably mix it up myself. Wow. Tejal, thanks so much. It's great to hear what you do, and I appreciate what you're doing. Thanks so much. Yeah. All right. That's Mary Lanning. <laughs> Your care is her inspiration. At the end of the day, healthcare is about helping people. So we're here in Lincoln, Nebraska at Tabitha. It's a healthcare company that's passionate about caring for you, but not till you get a little older. This is Christy Hendricks. She's the CEO at Tabitha. So Christy, why don't you just tell me a little bit about what Tabitha does? Sure. Tabitha um, cares for elders and their families. So uh, essentially how we explain um, our work and our passion is if you've got questions about aging and the, and the aging journey, we've got answers. Um, okay. We're a one-stop shop, give us a call. If we're not the solution, we'll connect you with the right solutions. Wow, and so you are caring for elderly people. What do you, get, what do you guys do for them? So we, um, we serve in 28 southeast, southeastern counties in Nebraska. Um, we provide uh, long-term care, short-term care, um, assisted living, independent living, all those kinds of things wow. that living communities people can see. But also within those 28 counties, we provide home care services, hospice services, mm. private duty services, adult day services. Wow. Meals on Wheels, anything you need, we have solutions for those. Cool. Needs. So over a thousand employees. We do. And what kind of career fields you guys have at Tabitha? Sure. Well, a lot of people think that um, you know at Tabitha we just have a lot of nurses, and we do have a lot of nurses. Um, but we also have um, we also have folks like certified nursing assistants, which doesn't require a college degree. Mm -hmm. um, we have homemakers that go into the home and help you maybe do light housekeeping, meal preparation. We have um, a large finance department department that helps us obviously take care of all of our financial needs, yeah. uh, marketing, um, a lot of management opportunities. The, the, the bottom line is, is um, we have sort of a career continuum in compassion at Tabitha. So um, if caring is your passion, uh, there's probably something for you here mm -hmm. and a place for you to start and a place for you to grow. Well, Christy, I'd love to talk to a young professional around here and just get a feel for her experience sure. or his experience. Do you have someone I could talk yeah, to? Yeah, we'd love to. I mean, there's many, but I'd love to introduce you to Katie. She's got a, just a great story to tell. Perfect. This is Katie. Katie, why don't you tell us your job title because I don't want to mess it up. Sure, I'm the Hospice Medical Social Services Director with Tabitha. Wow, okay, that's a mouthful. Tell us what that means. Sure, what that means is I oversee the psychosocial team at Tabitha with our hospice program. So I oversee social workers, our bereavement coordinator, bereavement program, our volunteer coordinator, and our volunteer program. Wow, okay, so what does that look like day to day? The great thing about hospice is day to day it changes. It really is just depending on what's going on with our clients and family as well as our team members. But it can include meeting one on one with family members and clients out in the community, helping them understand what hospice is and how we can help others, as well as meeting with my team members. So you're directing a team who's meeting with people in the community and you're doing that yourself. So you're getting out there and speaking with people about hospice, is yes. that right? Mm -hmm. And so what kind of degree or degrees did you get sure. that got you to this point? I have a bachelor's in psychology and then I went and received my master's in social work. Okay, um, and so what different types of careers are you gonna find like on your team or different types of degrees? Sure, it can be anywhere from we have hospice aides, so maybe they have a CNA degree to nursing to bachelor's of social work to master's level and above. Wow. Okay, and uh, I wanted to give you a chance to say what your favorite part of your job is. The favorite part is just being able to see smiles on clients' faces and being able to be a part of their end of life journey. All right, we're in Omaha, Nebraska at ScanMed. It's a medical technology company that's doing futuristic, mind-blowing things. Let's go check it out. I'm here with Dr. Randy Jones. He's the president and CEO at ScanMed. So, Dr. Jones, why don't you tell us a little bit about your company? Sure. 
Well, we're a high-tech, uh, fast-to-market engineering, design, manufacturing, and repair company for medical devices. That's medical equipment that's used all over the planet, basically, hmm. to really help uh, assess problems, clinical problems in, in humans. Okay. Dogs, too. <laughs> nice. Dogs, <laughs> yeah, too? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And so you deal specifically with MRI machines, is that right? right? That's correct. Uh, MRI is, is, is this huge uh, piece of equipment that uses radio frequencies, magnetic fields. Um, every big hospital has one, and that's really where you go when you're a sick patient. You really have a mm. serious problem. And, and it, or, or maybe it's not so serious, it's just a torn ACL or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe a, 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 num a numbness in your arm, maybe it's a pinched nerve. Okay. MRI is really the only thing that can really assess what the problem is deep down. And what my company does is we design the antennas for those MRIs. Hmm. And those antennas greatly accentuate that signal coming back and give the doctor a lot better picture of what's going on inside the body. Wow, so you're like making a digital camera that's like better and better and better. Better camera, better antenna, hmm. absolutely. Cool, and so what kind of uh, different educational backgrounds are you gonna find here at Scan? Sure, anywhere from uh, PhD electrical engineers down to uh, uh, assembly people that came right out of high school to those that have two-year degrees in, in different technologies, CAD drafting, three-dimensional design, uh, we have mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, um, we have painters, carpenters, you name it. It's across the board. Wow. Well, I love what you guys are doing here and uh, I'm excited to learn more about it. Super. Let's do it. Oh, nice. This is Scott. He's the engineering lab supervisor at ScanMed. Scott, tell us what you do here. We engineer coils from conceptualization to a released product. Okay, and what's a coil? Basically a coil, you'll put it on when you go into the MRI system and it'll give you a better SNR in a targeted area. And an SNR is? Signal to noise ratio. Okay, so basically it's like a radio station, you're making it clearer. Right. Nice. So uh, tell us you know, what you do on a daily basis. We get a coil from manufacturing and then we'll take it, tune it, make sure all the bugs are worked out, take it over to the MR system and scan it. Nice, so it's not like a nine to five job, it's more like you gotta get this thing done. Right, a lot of tight deadlines. Nice, and so uh, tell us how you got into this field. I've always been interested in electronics, playing video games as kids and everything. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to know how stuff works. This is kind of something that came naturally. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of educational background do you have? I have a four year degree from ITT Tech in electronic and communications engineering. Cool. Uh, so what's your favorite part of the job here? <clears throat> Just that we're, we're doing stuff that nobody has ever done before. It's really interesting. Nice. And you're helping people out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Getting them healthy. Saving lives, hopefully. Yeah. Heck yeah. So uh, is there something I could do around here? Like some way I could help ScanMed just in the brief time I'm here? We can have you solder a board on a coil back here. I've always wanted to <clears throat> solder something. Back that way? Yeah. All right, let's go. OK, I think I'm ready. OK. Walk me through it. So we'll take the board, mm -hmm. put it right in the white lines there. OK. So screen, there you go, right like that. Do that. I'm good at coloring within lines. I think this is very similar. Take the soldering iron there. Soldering iron. Clean it off. OK, then, this is super hot, right? Yep, about 700 degrees. Ready? Stick it right in the hole in the board. OK. I'm sure this will I'll move the this big board. hole there, right there, yep. Bring the solder to it. It'll start melting. Ooh, I'm nervous. Wow, I'm shaking. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, there we go. Is it pretty good? Should I take it out? No, look. Put a little more solder in there. Okay, slowly mm -hmm. remove the iron. We'll go to the other side. Oh, okay, so I haven't done so great so far. Well, it's in there. It's, yeah, it's it's really on there. This, right. this equipment is worth how much again? About $10,000 when it's all finished. Great, I think you might need to redo this one, but let's see. Okay, same thing? There. Yep, Bang. stick it in, melt the solder. It's funny, it like disappears mm -hmm. in there. And then. Slowly take the iron out. Sure, there you go. All it right. Looks good. Oh yeah, first solder. Boom. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. I'm glad to help Thank you, you out. Thank I'm you. I'm sure this saved you minutes of minutes. your Minutes, absolutely. All right.